and you're playing a random battle, shards, with a division mate, and you're top tier. So Yay. This, <laughs> yay, this is already going to be good. You've been 15 crates with 150 keys. Okay, that sounds better, Skyrim. <laughs> so what's the decision for you guys um, split here like this? Um, I usually request, like, if, uh, if I end up divvying with somebody hmm. that we don't just kind of overweight one side. So I think okay. he's going to go for Bravo and I'm going to head to A. I figure the Minsk has terrible detection, mm -hmm. whereas the Benson does not. So that yeah. at least allows me to give some kind of something. Fair enough. And you... I... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, since I've started playing this line, I remember I asked you maybe a week or so ago, like, should I be smoking cruisers? And um, the general consensus was, well, since you have no idea if they're going to even use your smoke, probably not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I developed a little method where I'll go like, set a smoke screen, we'll go, and mm -hmm. ask for somebody's support. And most times people seem to get it. Mm -hmm. So if I can ever like have a little cruiser in my back pocket, kind of ensuring that we kick the crap out of whatever's in front of us, that's always fun. But yep. um, in this case, there's just no cruisers. So, yep. you know, can't do it. <laughs> yep. So like... Um... What I find very effective as uh, as a regular cruiser player, if I'm playing with a destroyer and they're trying to tell me that they're going to smoke me, uh, sometimes I see them blowing their horn for a bit. So I, I look and then, oh, look, they're, they're blowing smoke. Okay, I get it, right? Or like you said, this, the set of smoke screen is a really great way as well to just get attention. So I do like that. Are you enjoying the, the grind, sir? Um, it's been really interesting. Uh, the French DDs I took to, the Italian, or not the Italian, the uh, Japanese Torp DDs were a really interesting experience <laughs> of figuring out how to make that work. That was a lot of learning, um, but, yeah. but I did figure it out. And then the US, I, I hopped into a tier six late one night because I had like a, a US quest to do or whatever. Mm. And it's like, wow this ship handles really well. Yes. It moves and stops and stuff. This yes. is neat. And just Who'd that alone was so interesting that I'd like, I'm going to play this line. So yeah, I have um, mm -hmm. been pretty nice. <laughs> it's uh, th these, these destroyers have always just been, they've been very comfortable. They're not going to be the best in everything other than their smoke abilities, but they're just a very comfortable line of destroyers to play. I'm not a fan of the floaty shells. It might involve large fits of loud swearing on stream. But other than that, you know, so uh, there, there is a lot that I do enjoy. <laughs> you have to think of it as the closer the enemy is, the more accurate your guns become. So for Fletcher, you or for, sorry, for any uh, USN destroyer, you're typically trying to engage targets within, sorry, I would say between like six to 10 kilometers. Uh, the closer, the better. Like, right here, I mean, you're not going to miss the, the turbots if you opened up. Uh, also, I'm not sure why you are moving so far forward here. Maybe just to get a bigger smoke screen for yourself? Probably absentmindedly watching the torps. Okay, so here's one thing that I think you could, you could change uh, very easily. One small tweak. When you start laying smoke, if you are not spotted and don't need to go off detection immediately set your speed to one quarter because if you set your speed to one quarter you will continue to lay smoke forward and you're in smoke so you can start shooting and then once once it runs off on the bottom that then obviously you can start reversing or stop or whatever you want to do but the reason why moving forward is so helpful is because a lot of times you get like um like that caustic for example uh, maybe if the elbow is closer they're going to torpedo your smoke, right? Like, that's a given because, you know, smoke equals torps uh, because everybody knows the destroyer's in there. So if you if, if you uh, pop smoke and reverse like a lot of people do off the bat, uh, it's a lot easier for you to take those torpedoes. If you keep moving a little bit farther forward as you deploy smoke and then stop, most players aren't going to torpedo the, the front end of a the smoke. They're going to target, they're going to expect you to back off a little bit. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. So like here you've got about 10 seconds, nine seconds of smoke um, that you could be you could be popping out some more and crawling forward. 
but instead you're choosing to reverse. And this is the easy part of the game. This is when if you've got your culvers, you just hold down your left mouse button and eat your sandwich with your left hand. Got a minute to do it. Now, Turpitz has torpedoes at 6 kilometers, so he can actually torpedo your smoke, too. Matter of fact, he probably did. I don't think Cossack has a heal. Uh, I don't... I don't think so, no. Yeah, I'm looking at your division mates, uh, chat there. Okay, now, here's where it's important to mind your smoke detection. 2.7 kilometer. Uh, I would shoot HE here, by the way. Um... And once you get to once you get to about three kilometers, you need to stop shooting. Yeah, I would keep shooting until you get to that point. So right here, I would say you stop shooting, go to torps, and wait. Don't torp yet. Wait. You need to see what the Dunkirk's gonna do. If he's gonna if he's gonna swing hard to the right to his right to try to, to turn away, then you can predictively torp in front of him. If he's going to charge you in the smoke, then you need your torpedoes available so that you can turn out and you can move to the right and get him on your side and then torp him in the face. And he's leaving. Okay, good. That's unfortunate. No, wait. He's going to turn back in. Uh, he's going to turn back in. I would have held that last until... I mean, it's not going to matter. He's dead anyway. But I would have held that, that second volley until you knew exactly what he was going to do. Either you get detected and you're forced to, 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 to you know, turn and torp him. Um, or, or he turns away, in which case you can torp him for free anyways. You know what I mean? You submitted a nice Fletcher game? Okay, cool. Dashkan. I've got a bunch of coal ships I'm going to try to get through. We talked recently about coal ships and there's chat, and then we go from there. So we'll see what happens. I'm so excited, guys. I've got two hours with y'all to do replays. This is good. Two hours plus. Plus. Um, any questions at all so far, Ta um, Askins? Uh, no. Um, yeah, the second torp thing was wasteful. I, I do have, um, it was a little weird moving mm. from, um, the previous tiers up to this because the torp reload gets so much longer. Yes, it So, does. like, the younger ones were, I don't know, it felt like it was a minute and six seconds. All of a sudden goes up to, like, nearly two. So, yeah. whereas throwing torps was just... Almost like throwing German torps, where they, they really come back pretty quick. These do have that lingering downtime. Right. Now, I paused it here uh, for another reason, too. This is another example of, personally, I wouldn't open up. I, I realize that you're down a ship. Uh, you're up on hit points, which is great. Um, but I don't know that I would open up here unless... Unless you were worried your Harakaze div mate is gonna die, then I might open up to try to try to get the Cossack off here. But your your gun arcs are so bad that opening up here tells the enemy that where you're located for one, right? So the Aoba can luck chuck torps your way, for example, uh, and, and can shoot you too. Um, you're probably not gonna get the kill on this Cossack. You might. I don't know. It depends on your team, right? I don't remember when it was in this replay. But I started feeling like if we're not making plays, we're losing. Sure. And looking at the map right now, it doesn't look like it's a panic situation. Right. So that's good. Um, I do know that the Aoba is outside of my detection. So, mm -hmm. but as for why I took the shot there, I think it was, I was so far distant mm -hmm. that I felt I could juke shells if need be. Granted, it's a Japanese cruiser, but... Um, I, I, it's too much playing carrier and knowing how important destroyers are. Where it's like, absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this, but yes, I hate the floaty shells. So <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna offer to you a counter argument or counter suggestion, just something to think about. Do you notice how the Cossack is now smoked? Correct. 
chances are pretty strong he's going to stop and sit there. Now he's got Hydro, so you can't just get right to him at 2 kilometer. But you could sit right off, off of his last known position, say 3.5-4 kilometers away from his last known. Because I, I think Cossack is... I can't remember Cossack's Hydro range. But anyways, the point is... I would use this opportunity to get closer to the Cossack so when his smoke ends, you're right there to pounce on him. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Three kilometer. Okay, thanks, Crimson. By the way, hello, Crimson. Good to see you. Um, opening up like you did where you did uh, tells the Cossack that you're farther away. Um, if you're if you're lucky, he's going to come your way, but if you open up here, he knows you're coming, so, so that's a concern. Um, you're going to hate my other suggestion, which is, you see that Ryujo over there, the Elba is blocking you from getting to the Ryujo, but uh, you do possibly have a, a, a path to get to the enemy carrier. Should that Elba die, um, you could just literally go right along the Cossack uh, smoke area, kill the Cossack, and then work your way up north. It's 5.5. Okay, so instead you elected to go behind uh, the island, which is fine because that kept you from, you know, getting blasted by the Ilba, so that's fine. Oh yeah, Cossack. So the reason why I'm saying about getting right next to the Cossack smoke is because then when the Cossack smoke ends, it doesn't matter that his cos that his smoke is ridiculously or concealment is ridiculously low, because you're within it anyways. You know what I mean? So you're guaranteed to detect him. Um, yeah, I know we're up on points right now, but it yeah. just looks like the stuff that's between B and C is starting to become thick, fast, and nasty. So, and the real question is, how do we get in to approach this stuff? And I, I don't remember when in, there is a point in this where, where the panic button gets hit <laughs> and I go into like, you know, red flashing, mm -hmm. we have to do stuff. And I'm, I'm ex calling out to Raz, like, Right now, the Bismarck is running, the Gaide is running, the Turpits and Fuso are completely out of the match, the Ranger is tier six. The only person the only people that are gonna make plays here are us. The question is, there's so much of them, how do we make those plays? And yet we still have to do it. So, so there's part of me that's really trying to find where is the way in. Right. I, in my opinion, the way in is is dependent on the enemy making a dumb mistake. Um, and that dumb mistake is charging into BCAP. Look at their New Mexico, look at their Amagi, even their Flint, Vakwell and uh, the, the Marker, the Cossack, the Wichita, you know, they're all kind of in a line here. So they're probably going to funnel into BCAP. Now, you want to make sure that they will funnel into BCAP. So my opinion on this matter, I it, l let's go back and talk about you positioning yourself right outside the Cossack here, right? You have beautiful torpedo angles on this entire line of ships you can just torque for days in here and the idea is you want to funnel them into b because that creates a kill box that your bismarck and your fuso maybe your guy can can handle turpits i mean he's on an adventure just let him do but you know what i'm saying um you two destroyers could easily go up to this side here and start torping the hell out of out of the backside of bravo so my fear with that is that the Ryusho is based off that island. Yep. Now, granted, he could continue running along the A-line, but without anybody actively like hunting him, doing mm -hmm. the secret mission DD stuff, I would expect just constant overfly, overfly, overfly. Of so course. we would have to be in smoke, and then with everybody else running, I don't know what would be spotted. Of course. So then it comes down to luck chuck torpedoes. These are torpedoes that are meant to deny area as opposed to specifically targeted on ships. With so many ships that are going to start screaming into Bravo, you can just fire, like literally fire along here, and your your chances of hitting something are extremely high. Um, even if you don't hit something, you convince people to get out of this area, which is which is part of the 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 uh, part of what you gain from using torpedoes. You don't have to use torpedoes as an anti-ship target. It could also be an area denial thing. Now, opening up outside the smoke tells the enemy exactly where you are, so they can play based off of your position. 
and because of your orientation south, they know that the north side is safe. You've got a Cossack that's low, you've got a Vaquelin that's low. If you had gone to the north, if, yeah, we all know ifs, right? Um, maybe you might have encountered one or both, or say all three destroyers. You might have been able to take out one of those ships, maybe two even. And that could, oh, never mind, Flint's there. Well, forget that idea. I think actually that was literally what I was starting to look at. Oh, mm -hmm. no. So I, mm -hmm. I've, I had the same reaction that you literally just had. <laughs> now, Wilt. <laughs> now, a minute to a minute and a half ago, had you gone farther north, it wouldn't have been such a deal, right? Because you could have turned out and you could have sailed, um, say, towards the two line or something like that and been totally safe from the Flint's position. Also, that Flint's turn right there, that's probably a torpedo turn, so he's probably luck chucking 9.2 kilometer torpedoes in your general direction. I see Raptor says, I'm like a bad penny, I always turn up. <laughs> oh my god, Raptor man, I had so much fun this morning, you have no idea how much, how, how good it felt again. It really did. I'm not sure if I can share what we did this morning. Or not, but it was it was fantastic. Balancing Sumo. Good to see you, and I love the name. And Stevie is back uh, cleaning his butt. Look at that, Yoshino is already saying GG's. I mean, there's... He, no, it's not GG yet. It's weird having that much fun before the sun was really up. Oh man, you missed King of the Sea uh, when I cast it with... Uh, Senpai, and it was like a 4 a.m. stream. Oh, that was that was great. Okay, those torps there, that was probably the flint torpedoes. Oh god, Wichita. Of all things, you see the Wichita? Now, I'm gonna pause for a sec. So, when you were farther south, and you got spotted, you told the enemy where you were, and that allowed them to, to reposition accordingly to block you. Uh, and that's kind of what I was getting at before about the, sp the spot plane, uh, or, or getting spotted when you were, were firing outside that smoke. If you didn't fire, we don't know what the Wichita would have done, right? We don't. But with you being spotted, he's a radar cruiser. He's probably going to want to go to where the destroyers are. He knows where you are, at least. He's going to head your direction. Does that make sense? Uh, it does, yes. Both, both me and the Harakaze were spotted down there, so... Mm -hmm. it gave a lot of indication i guess hey you should do something here yep i don't i'm i spent I, I don't know how long as far as like now as well as time after now again looking for like what's the way in and me moving up here i was trying to move up semi-cautiously so that i could turn out if i had to to mm -hmm. see if i could catch some vision on a destroyer maybe to dump shells into um, now why aren't you shooting at the cossack I don't know which one is the Cossack from from this replay. At the Cossack the, the Cossack is lower health. He's at one percent instead of three percent. Sorry guys, it's a mod I forgot to take off from Aslan. But he the point is he's lower and so a, a lucky shot has a better chance of killing the Cossack than it has of killing the Vakwellen. So that's why I was thinking shoots at I mean you killed the Vox, so whatever. But you know what I mean, like low health destroyer. I don't know. Um, now, you guys being spotted over here, you were talking about the way in. You guys being spotted over here, look at what you've done. You have pulled Wichita, uh, the Cossack, the Vok, the Flint, the New Mexico, all to you. Which does free your team to go into Bravo. Oh, I guess your Fuso died. Oops. Normally, that would Zaf. But what you've essentially done, in a sense, is you've taken them off of the funnel. You've taken them away from Bravo, and now they're moving away because of the potential threat that is your torpedoes and your position. So, I, I gotta say, if you had gone farther north and not been spotted, you could torp into this general area while the rest of the team moves up from the south, and then you've got kind of that hammer and anvil approach. 
I'm going to be honest, I was surprised that they all decided to run at this point. I didn't look at it as a, me having a torp position so much as I literally thought that the enemy was so confident that they had already won this mm -hmm. and that we had no capability to contest that um, they started backing off to play safe because they didn't want to throw. Sure. That's now, how I had read it, but yeah, I, I could see what you're saying. We were talking earlier at the top of the stream about mods, and I think you mentioned you don't really use mods except with King of the Sea, you, you've discovered a few, right? So here's one mod that's really helpful, the, the team hit points. You're down by one ship, but you are up by 16,000 hit points. That tells you that your ships, even though you're fewer in number, are generally healthier than the enemy, right? So in theory, they'll be able to handle a, a fight better. And then the other big mod, of course, is on the right side here. You can see with the team panels mod, the Cossack is extremely low. New Mexico is rather low. So he's going to back off because he's so low. So that means effectively they've got Flint, Marker, Wichita's at half. He's probably going to back off. Amagi is the, is the wild card. You never know what an Amagi's going to do. But the point I'm getting at is that you guys actually might have an advantage should enough people leave the area. I, I think this is one of my shortcomings as a player, mm. is that I spend so much time looking at the map that mm -hmm. I don't see that health and translate that into like X amount of these people have to bail off this position, etc. I'm, right. I'm aware of some things, for instance, the destroyers that were low are going to play safe or run away. Um, but every yeah. time I looked at the map, this screams to me, we lose. So, mm -hmm. to me, I, I'm operating under an extreme amount of tension thinking what is the way in what is the way in what is the way in how do we force a way in oh. how do we like ex uh how do we excise kills right I, I just noticed a smith winston on the enemy team there and he's a he's a pretty good destroyer player as well so i'm gonna just ping him so he knows that he's in the game because it's fun um so yeah i've communicated to Roz like the only people on this team that are going to make plays are us. Mm -hmm. So we have to do something. The first thing was moving over. It ended up resulting in a kill, or maybe mm -hmm. two or something, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to crash dive Bravo. Because again, like just nobody else is making moves. The Turfitz is playing scared. The Bismarck is moving up, but that might actually be bad because he might be throwing his ship away. So it's... Okay. I, I am extremely concerned about the situation at the moment. So you have to make the best out of the Bismarck's play. And the Bismarck's play, if it's a throw, it's a throw. But he's pushing up, which means that the enemy is going to start reacting to him and not so much to you. So now's the part where you start thinking about, what is the enemy going to do? Uh, you've got a Wichita over here, which is a huge threat because of the radar, right? You've got that marker over here, which is a threat, partially because he's really, really healthy. Now... I know he's a decent destroyer player to the point where I have to respect him if I'm playing in a game against him. Uh, you might not know that off the top of your head. You, just, you know how it is. You learn players over time. Um, but and, and SAT just brought up a brilliant point here, okay? Which is that both of you guys are moving to the same cap, which reduces a couple of things. One is it reduces your team's vision. They can't see what's happening over here necessarily, especially if the Bismarck dies, this whole this whole area just disappears, right? Um, also, you don't have the cross shots, the torpedo cross shots ability that the Harakaze and you can design. So I would almost rather see you playing north of the Bismarck and your Harakaze going into B, luck chucking torps north, you luck chuck torps east, boom, cross shot. And, and maybe you don't hit anything right but it's that it's that luck of the torpedo that that you are depending on right now in this game so let's see what happens i think i think at this particular moment it was me looking at passive gameplay and thinking something had to be done uh -huh. and me asking Roz basically nobody else is going to do anything it has to be us i need you to come in here so we can bully down this full health dd Mm. Um, and forcibly take this cap, right? Uh, which kind of is what it amounts to. I think when the radar comes in, I stop behind the island. Could be wrong on that, but um, it was more I needed the backup because I couldn't guarantee that I'd be able to gun it down mm -hmm. as all this stuff is just close enough to be able to peg me. So, mm -hmm. 
And this is where what I would have done is I would have told Roz to back into this spot here to draw the radar up. Um, not expecting to kill anything. But you draw the radar up, you allow the enemy to focus on his position while you get into the back up here and start torping in this general direction. You might get lucky and hit the, the Cossack. You might get lucky and hit the Flint. Um, you don't know at the time, you didn't know where the Wichita was or the Wichita headed back north again. You might get lucky and hit him there. Uh, regardless, I do like that you sat there, you waited out the radar, you were very patient, and now that patient's about to get rewarded because, as you can see here, Winston was forced to smoke up. And, oh, there goes your Bismarck, there goes your Gata. If he's still in the smoke and broadside, that's going to be good for you. Uh, if he's not, that's unfortunate. Oh! I agree with the decision to luck uh, fire. There it goes. Nice Kraken. And now this Gata is in bad positioning. He is looking the wrong way with his turrets. This is all on you to get the kill now. So you can get in there, kill him, and get into his smoke. And use his smoke to just piss on the enemy. Which I think is what you're going to do. Yes. Now, I would be hitting F3. There you go. The Wichita needs to die. Hey, Khan. I do have a bunch of replays lined up. This is the only one that has been redeemed right now. So, if you have one you want to submit, uh, you can. Although, uh, at this point, you're probably going to need to use a cover my replay. Or, if, you know, you can sub or whatever. But, I don't... Whatever it is. But, um... I do have, I think, four or five. You can check that tweet there and see. I'm trying to prioritize coal ships since that was brought up in the Zach chat earlier. I don't like you reversing here to the point where you got spotted. You you backed up too fast. If that Wichita was thinking I gotta kill the destroyers and was looking at you, he would have gotten a free shot on you right there. Uh yes. But um, I guess I felt I had the, I, I had enough health that I was able to risk it. Mm -hmm. And if he pulled his guns onto me, then he's pulling his guns off someone else. Mm -hmm. Granted, I guess the Turpid says enough health, but that's still how I was evaluating it. Sure. At this point in the game, I would say it's late game. Any risk to your health is not worth it unless it's to get a kill. Unless it's something to where the enemy is at 1% or 2% health. They're literally a shot away from death, and you know you're going to lose all by all means. I mean, look at the enemy now. They are shooting at your Hakaze because he derped out of your smoke for a second, got himself detected. Now yeah, you're I'm actually shooting. gonna start. I'm gonna start shooting to pull fire because yes. I don't want them to spam the smoke. Uh, and I completely agree with you. Here is where you using your your health uh, just fine, right? Because. Now you're saying, I'm over here, <laughs> you know, and these guys are going to be like, oh, do you do you? And they're going to start clicking on you and you're just not going to die in time. So I do like that decision there. That's the right time to use your hit points. Whew. All right. Any any questions, anything you want to me to talk about uh, with, with regards to that replay at all? No, I think you hit several points that I was not looking at, which is good. That's um, why we're here. Yeah, uh, I didn't have anything in relation to the cruiser setups that I've been doing, but okay. mostly there was there was a fair amount of panic, and I, I wasn't seeing, like, when you were saying, well, you know, if the Harakaze was out wide and you were here, you could cross torp and stuff. My, my genuine fear was if... I guess the Cossack was so low at mm -hmm. that point that it couldn't threaten us to light us. Mm -hmm. But my concern was if we are forced to take action and don't have the ability, you know, suddenly just <laughs> a huge torrent of fire comes in. The right. range on the torps is not long enough for me to, me to be able to really set up anything with that. I don't know the specs on the Harakaze. I just don't. Sure. So, so I was looking at more like... Um, taking board space than trying to set up for some strange cross torp kill stuff that that's still new to me fair enough now to me the bigger thing is what you mentioned earlier the Cossack is so low a destroyer is actually it's most dangerous when it's low because if it's got adrenaline rush 
That means it's pumping out torpedoes like crazy. You saw the cost that killed your Bismarck earlier at towards the end of that match. Um, that's why back up a little bit and I was talking about shooting that Vaquelin instead of the Cossack. To me, the Cossack is the higher value target because of its concealment and its ability to stealth torp. If your carrier is not spotting their destroyer, then the Cossack can just sit there and sit and spin and torp for days, which he did against the Bismarck. Um, so that's why I was thinking, get in and get that destroyer out as quickly as you can. Does that make sense? Uh... Kind of. <laughs> it, it clicked, but not fully. So, rar. Well, I think about it. A Cossack's reload is a minute. And then if it's if it's near death, I don't know the math. You're a numbers guy, so you can do the math. But whatever. 48 seconds-ish. You see what I'm getting at? So, sure. he's pumping out torpedoes so much quicker. And if he still has smoke, he can smoke and, and fire his guns and, and do additional pew-pew damage and stuff like that. Whereas the Vaquelin essentially has to be spotted to use his torpedoes, assuming, you know, he's torping somebody that's that's uh, that's cutting away or, or even. Uh, if I remember right, he has to... He, he, he can torpedo a charging Bismarck, you know, for days, and that's perfectly fine. But I, I look at a Cossack as much more dangerous than a Vaquelin, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, Cossack cool. decided he didn't want to win, right? <laughs> yeah, I was surprised that he hung around. I was surprised the Vakalin hung around, that we were able to collect those two ships, because uh, the point swings off of the ships that shouldn't have died but allowed themselves to die was pretty massive. That so, helped a lot. So they, they both saw you, right? Because you got yourself detected, and they were thinking, oh, I got this. Um, and because of that, they saw you, they, they probably, and of course we don't, we don't know exactly what they're all thinking, right? But they probably saw, uh, their team coming into position and saying, oh, hey, let's, let's support the team as we go and kill this Benson, right? So let me uh, let me see if I can do this right. It's been a while since I've done it, but I'm gonna go ahead and render. Yes, it's reading the file. We're gonna we're gonna watch that through the um, through uh, the replay ability. Let's see if I can do that. Give me a sec here. Yeah, this is it. Okay, cool. I need to rename that. That that's a bad name. That's a bad name. Rename. Um. Okay. So let's browse that. Let's download this. So this is something that we're going to be talking about in the near future. All right. Let's uh, drop studio mode. There we go. Okay. So here's your game. And, you know, we're, we're, this, is, this is super quick. We're going to watch it kind of move around here. So there's you and your div mate. Okay. So let me back up just a tad. I think this is the crucial moment here when you could have gone north, um, but you didn't, and that's okay. Right here. If you didn't open up here and kept going north, I want you to think about this area here as your death zone, right? That you can just dump torpedoes left and right and you don't care. Um, you don't have to be close enough to be spotted. You can be up to here. Your torpedoes will range to about this, this range here. Just heads up, the mouse pointer isn't showing up on the screen. Of course it's not. Go figure. Uh, how can I get that moist? I can't. I don't know how I can get. It. But it it'll so like delta five, like halfway through delta five, right? If you were to draw a forty five degree line through delta five, mm -hmm. uh, right about there. If you were at say Charlie two or three, your torpedoes will probably reach about that range, and that allows you to force the enemy to say, "I don't want to be here," uh, because of the threat that you present. One, you're a Benson, so you've got long-range torpedoes, and two, you're pretty damn healthy, 
so you can be ballsy with that health and with that positioning. That's going to take most battleship players completely out of that area. They're going to say, nope, I'm out of here. And what that does is that funnels them to go into Bravo. And Bravo is the kill zone because you've got the Gata there, you've got the Turpets there, the Bismarck there, the Fuso until he died, you know what I mean? Like, you've got your beef down there that can shoot at anything that, that gets into that spot. Um, now let's continue on. You stayed south of the island. Okay, and you've continued to move around. There you go. You're kind of going yeah. back and forth a little bit. Yeah, I was using the island so that I could safely engage the Yoba. Resulted in a kill, but just in case I could duck out. Yep. Um, and then time yep. just kind of happened after that. Sure. And the kill on the Yoba was fine. Um, personally, if you had gone farther north, um, you had the opportunity to possibly kill it before, uh, before the classic like if you were lined up and i know this is like one of those like trick shots nothing but net but if you were lined up on the elba and just waited for the cossack smoke to end you could shoot the elba and then just, and then change your uh your focus to the cossack but that requires a lot of thinking and planning on your side of things um but here's again where you could have been luck chucking torps into there but you went into bravo instead you got the marker good And then you won partially because that Cossack presented himself to you, right? He came in at the uh, very end. I guess it was a nice source of points. <laughs> so, never underestimate the team's ability to throw. And I was talking earlier, you said, I don't see a way back in. The way back in is you wait for the enemy team to do stupid things. The Wichita, really stupid thing coming down south here. He thought he was going to get a kill on you and the other destroyer. The Turpets is there, says no. If the Wichita had stayed north, it would have been a very different situation, right? Because who can kill uh, him? Yes, his radar would have been down, so it would have been risky as hell to push the Merker, uh, depending on where he was positioned. Right. But since we knew where he was, I could just use the island and block him. Absolutely. But you, in a sense, you have to think about it as you were dependent on that Wichita to make a mistake. And Sure. Hey, great. He made that mistake. This is random battles. You don't know anything about the enemy players or any of that kind of stuff, you know. So, he, him coming out like that was great because he just saw the turbots and said, <laughs> and then boof, right? So, that was, that was perfect. And then on top of that, the icing on the cake was that Cossack coming in and saying, kill me. While you were just within here, I've got to pause. I'm going to hit play again. You're going to see him. You don't even see him because you killed him already. Right? Yeah. You killed him so fast that I think he just shows up quick, briefly enough to be a, a dead spot on the mini-map. Yep, there it is. Um, and what was brilliant was that your Turpets, even though we had talked about him earlier being on an adventure, the important thing is that your Turpets was there when you absolutely needed him to take advantage of the enemy cruiser's misplay. That's all it comes. That's that. That's all there is to it. That enabled you to get up here and get the kill, and win the game. So, I'm glad it worked out. But I have to say, from my non-full map encompassing viewpoint, that was <laughs> extremely tense for me for like six minutes of wondering how in the hell we could unlock the puzzle to make it resolve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're down on ships. Immediately, that's a concern. You're down on caps because they were in Bravo, so that's another concern. And you're sitting there saying it's time for, for the big dick maneuver, right? To just go in there and, and swing and hope for, for a win. And you did it, and it worked. Um, I am pausing here because there were two mistakes on the enemy team. We talked about the Wichita coming around. I think the other mistake was that Merker sitting where he was. He was near full health, but I don't think he needed to be here. I think he could have kited away. At this t at this point, the enemy team was going to win. All they had to do was leave the area. Your Magi and New Mexico got that. Also, they're leaving because of you being in the cap, or at least your heart Kazi being in the cap. They don't know the destroyers are there. They're scared of torpedoes. They're going to sail away. That's what battleships do, okay? So what does that leave you with? That leaves you with the Wichita, the Flint, the Cossack, and the Carrier. And the marker. So I think if the enemy would have just turned around and kite away. The flint? 
could have stayed where he was. The Flint actually should have been better off in B, in my opinion. The Flint and Wichita, if they work together, like if they position themselves right here, work together, smoke each other, radar each other, pew pew. I mean, that could have been a very, very different experience. SAT says, if Turpitz did something mid-game, let's back up. If, if Turpitz would have done something mid-game, and Fuso, Fuso just kind of, if Fuso would have stayed here and Turpitz would have stayed here, that could have been a different situation. That's true. But that's something you'll generally learn over time is that when a battleship sees a destroyer, their instinctive decision, most of the time, they have two instinctive decisions. One is to flee and the second is to charge. Um, be afraid of both, but I mean, the ones that flee, you're never going to torp. The ones that charge, you have to really be careful about your torp usage, otherwise you're dead. Cool. Uh, other questions at all? Anything else you want to discuss? Uh, no. I... Yeehaw. <laughs> awesome, man. Hey, thanks for subbing. Thanks for uh, being an awesome member of the community and stuff like that, too. Roar. Well, thank you for what you do, too, dude. You're welcome. Here's a shout-out for you. We're going to move over to Stream Raiders. And we got to get this game in. We're going to do a 30-second ad, uh, start the battle, and uh, see what happens. And then, Cod, I'm, we're going to do your game next. Leningrad. Yes, don't forget, we are giving away a community contributor container, and so far we have, like, eight people that have entered? Eight? Ocho people have entered. This is... But Stan's war beast is just epic war beast. Look at him. Look at him go. Dark Knights. Oh, there they go. Now they're moving. We got this one, boys. Alright, one we're, we're probably gonna lose on this one. Um, so we're gonna do this one to do healing. And if you guys have healers, healers I think at this point in uh, the dungeon are really important. So bring out your absolute strongest units. Whatever you've got that are epics. Whatever you have that's uh, a strong unit. We'll put our base camp over here. But bring, bring your epic units, bring your strong units, bring your healers. I think that's what we're going to need for this to work. Whoops. Keep screwing that up. Anyway. Let's get back to WoWs. Let's turn off that video. Where's your, where's that video? There it is. Boink. All right, Cotton, here's your game. I just have to uh, do the thing. Ta-da! Ta-da! 